Welcome back, everyone. Uh, as always, this is Matt from Cleveland Sex Therapy. I'm a licensed professional clinical therapist uh, and certified sex and relationship therapist. So today I wanted to talk about green flags. We've all heard so much about red flags and deal breakers, and I'm sure I will do another video on that in the future. But we don't hear a lot about green flags. Green flags are things that happen in your relationship that are positive, that you want, right? Something that your partner or partners are doing that shows respect and appreciation. These are quite literally the opposite of a red flag. So today I thought I would talk about my top 10 green flags to look for in relationships. One, first and foremost, they respect your boundaries. That's huge, right? A boundary is something we put in place for ourselves. It's something to protect us. It, it allows us to move through this world in a safe and comfortable manner. If your partner's respecting your boundaries, that is such a plus. That shows that they have empathy and that they respect what you're doing with your life and how you're setting it up. Two, and maybe I should have saved this for last, but this is one of my favorite ones. They know how to communicate and express their feelings. This is really big. A lot of people in this world have difficulty expressing feelings because feelings can be seen as a sign of weakness, especially if we're looking at penis owners or individuals who identify as male or who were born male. Expressing feelings is uh, negative when we look at toxic masculinity. But at the end of the day, expressing your feelings and communicating them shows that you're in tune with them and that you want to be able to create this mutual bond with this person or people that you're with. Three, you're on the same team. And what that means is when you're engaging in discussions or arguments or you're navigating the world, you're not really coming up against each other a lot. You're not feeling a ton of me versus you, right? You're tackling problems as a we, as an us. You're entering situations in a respectful manner. Four, they give you space for yourself. That's big, right? Individual me time is so huge. I talk to clients and individuals quite often about self-care and self-love. Once we start taking care of ourselves, then we can create this feedback loop into our relationships. So having your partner respect your individual me time, it's something to look out for. Five, they have healthy relationships with other people. This is big, right? You wanna make sure that a person that you are dating or looking to date or in a relationship with has a network of individuals that they can turn to for support for love, for fun times. You don't want to be that sole individual, right? When we see individuals create and foster healthy relationships, it helps us understand and know that they have the capacity of doing that with us. Six, they show up for you and they keep their word. Talk about vulnerability, talk about trust, talk about connection. If I am asking my partner for something, if I'm in a really negative space and I need help and my partner is there for me, that is such a positive quality to have. That means that my partner cares about me and, and notices that something is going on in my life and they want to be there. And keeping their word, that, that's trust building 101, right? If I say I'm gonna show up to your presentation or I'm gonna be there for your volleyball game, and they do, they show that they're a reliable narrator. And that's, that's a really great quality to have in a partner. Seven, they provide aftercare. So aftercare can mean a number of things, right? Aftercare can uh, happen after what we would call a scene within the BDSM community. And a scene is an, agreed to, is an agreed to scenario that two or more individuals are going to act out. Aftercare happens a lot after those scenes because it can involve a lot of power dynamics, a lot of uh, domination, submission, masochism, sadism, it can in involve a lot of emotions. And so aftercare is, is always recommended after those scenes. But also in general, if you aren't engaging in 
BDSM play, aftercare means after we have intimacy, we're sitting together, we're talking about it, we're cuddling each other, right? It's not just, I've had an orgasm, I'm done. Being able to stay in that vulnerable space, that's a really great quality. Eight, you feel good about yourself when you are around them. They're providing appreciation, they're validating you, they're showing you that love and support, and you just know, I actually want to be around you. I'm looking forward to seeing you because I know that you're gonna show me that empathy, you're gonna show me that love and support. Nine, they are reliable and consistent. This goes back to keeping their word, right? Being reliable, being consistent, showing up for you. This all points to someone who wants to give to their relationship, who wants to give something, who wants to connect. And last but not least, they use protection. And yes, I'm talking about protection when it comes to intimacy. One of the number one ways of preventing STIs in this country is through condom usage. So offering to use protection up front is a great way for you to then sit and think, wow, this person actually cares about sexual health and is looking out for both of our interests in this interaction. In fact, quite frankly, talking about sexual health in general with your partner, if they do that, that's a huge green flag. So there we go. I, now that I said that, I think there's 11 green flags. But listen, if your partner isn't doing every single one of these, that does not mean that they're not going to be a good partner or they're not going to show up for you. I created this list as a way for you to just look at specific qualities. But we are all different and we all show up to situations quite differently. There are some days where I am very reliable and consistent with my partner and there are some days where I'm just super stressed and tired and I may snap a little bit. But we've learned and we've created this dynamic with each other to understand when that happens and why it happens. So when you look at these flags, when you listen to this video, just know that yes, these are things to look out for in your relationship. And if they're happening, that's such a positive. But it's not the be all end all. As long as you're feeling respected, understood, and supported, that's what we're looking for. Until next time.